In just a couple months, millions of Canadians will stop what they're doing. They'll turn on the TV and spend quality time with Team Canada in Sochi. And he'll be there with us too. Because without him, the Olympics on CBC wouldn't be the same. Scott Russell. The average age of the Canadian swim team exactly. was the youngest in Olympic history. In all, Scott's covered 11 Olympics, and he's a passionate supporter of the Games. Those beautiful five rings are back in our house at CBC. In fact, when he took part in the 2014 Olympic torch relay in Moscow, he was overcome with emotion. That spirit of, of unity, uh, of peace, um, it's very emotional. Over more than 25 years with CBC Sports, Scott's done it all. Hosted five Commonwealth Games, the 2010 World Cup, the 2011 Women's World Cup, we were robbed, and interviewed the world's top athletes. Congratulations, she did everybody proud. All right, thanks Scott. Who was that superstar? And before Scott heads to Sochi in the international stage, he'll help celebrate grassroots sports in this country with the fourth annual Sports Day in Canada. Thank you very much, Haley. It's very kind of you. Please welcome Scott Russell! Hey, buddy. How are you, man? Good to see you. You wrong? Good. Good. I firmly believe this. I firmly believe this. You are, you are like the triple threat. You can do anything. You can do news, you can do sports, you can do whatever. But you actually, you seem to get the most enjoyment out of being with young people going after their dreams. I find that so cool that you did. But where do you think that comes from in you? I, I grew up uh, at a summer camp in Halliburton, Ontario. Do you mean that your parents dropped you off you once and decided to never pick you up and you actually were, you were raised there by the wolves? I cried like a baby, George, <laughs> and they were never going to come and take me away. But, but the Timberwolves took yeah, you in. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, I lost my paddle on the first day. And uh, my camp counselor was a great big football player by the name of Dave Haddon, went on and played for the Toronto Argonauts. Yeah. And he stood up in front of the lodge and he said, has anybody seen Scott Russell's paddle? And uh, they found it. And from that moment on, I had a friend. Yeah. And he was a guy who was involved in sport. And that's why I love sport. So and that's why I like what it does for young people. So if he was a priest, you would be in the seminary? Is that what, what do you mean? Is no. Like you know what it was? It was, uh, I learned everything that I know through sport. Yeah. And I think that kids learn everything they know, most of what they know, through sport. They learn to compete. They learn to be part of a team. They learn to win and lose and do it with grace and dignity. And to me, what happens on the field of play is life's greatest classroom. What's interesting about that is, I, I, I agree with you, in principle for the most part. I also think that for a whole group of kids, and this is why I think the Sports Day in Canada is, is, is important to do, is that athleticism in sports is the worst thing about your childhood. When I was a kid, most of my friends, everybody, we hated gym class, we were terrified of it, because that, that culture, that Lord of the Flies thing, you know, by the time we read Lord of the Flies, most of us had already experienced it in gym class. Yeah. And so you have that other side of sport that we have to figure out how to get all these kids who aren't gonna go on to be the captain of whatever team, no. guy or girl, right? So, so is, is is, is that what you look at when you look at those other kids who, who weren't on the proper path? Yeah, you have, to, you, you have to, with children, let them be not only literate, they have to be physically literate. Yeah. They have to understand their own bodies, what their bodies are capable of, what potential they have within them, how to relate to other children. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important, and that's why we should engage in sport and play. I mean, people differentiate between play and sport. I think they're the same thing. It's in us. It's instinctual to play at something, to play a game. And just naturally, you win or you lose, and you've got to figure out how to do it. You're going to do the 2014 games in Sochi, which is fantastic, yeah. right? I know how big a deal it is. Um, if you don't know how much of a real deal Scott is, just watch this clip after he ran the torch. Watch this. So when it happens, and, and you really get down to what the flame represents, uh, that, that spirit of, of unity, uh, of peace, um, it's very emotional, I gotta say. Aw, Scott, of course it is. That was, that's beautiful. Uh, listen, I'm sorry. Um, I'm all caught up in that with no, you, too. You know, listen. listen. I get like this. Everybody who knows me, I get like this about the Olympics. That's amazing, dude. What's the real deal? Yeah. 
I never, you know. Yeah, I cried uh, like a baby on on national TV with Heather Hiscox, and you know what though? Uh, I was talking about being at a summer camp, and I remember uh, we used to have the mini Olympics. I was like 10 years old, and the torch would come in, the kerosene torch, and the guy would be, you know, uh, in a loincloth. Which and sounds really inappropriate at a camp nowadays. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but that's the thing. It was this great pageantry. Yeah. It was this great spectacle. He would run from the war canoe with the torch. He would light the cauldron full of kerosene on top of the baseball diamond. And our camp director would, you know, recount the words of de Coubertin, the founder of the modern games. In the Olympics, as in life, it's not the victory that matters most, but the struggle. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, from that moment on, I loved the feeling of the Olympics, that it brought people together. It was about peace. It was about the greatest spectacle in the world. It was an event unlike any other. You know, we're talking about sport and play and, and, and how important it is. You've actually seen that and been a part of it firsthand, watching what happens with right to play and, and how important it is to take sport to another part of the world. You've done it with Adam Vancouver. And Adam, I wanted to weigh in on tonight's show. Adam, what have you got for Scott? Hi, George. Hi, Scott. Now, I've got a question for you, Scott. On our recent trip with Right to Play to Benin, West Africa, we drove hours into the wilderness to meet with King Agbo Man Sao Tin Kaponen of Ahuan Non Zun, Benin. I know this sounds like a Tin Tin novel, but he blessed you with his horsehair wand. Afterwards, you demanded that the rest of us lowly people on the trip refer to you as one thing and one thing only. Could you tell George and everybody how you prefer to be referred to as? Yes, no question, Adam Vancouver. What a great traveling mate. But I am now, by the way, you can no longer look me in the eye when you pass me in the hallway. You can't do that? Because I am known as the king. The king. The king. This guy singled you out and said you were the king. That's right. He, he looked at me and, you know, he didn't care about Perdita Felicia and Adam Vancouver. And yeah. he looked at me <laughs> and he blessed me with the horse hair. And from now on, I'm called the king. You're King Scott Russell. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Stick around. More with Scott right after this. You know, they don't get more pro than Scott. Good evening. I'm Scott Russell. And he's got a great sense of humor as well. He may need it when we dig up some clips from the archive next. Is here. Sorry, King Scott Russell was here. Um, during November, have you ever considered growing a mustache back? G growing my mustache back? Here's why. Yes, thank you. Please I knew you were going to bring this up. This is wonderful. Wait, watch this. Uh, yeah. road miles in the province, <laughs> only I love 384 that. are of the all-weather standard. <laughs> if and when rail lines continue to disappear <laughs> in the province, the Premier will be putting pressure on Ottawa. Look at that guy. Pressure to build more all-weather roads like this. Scott now, Russell, CBC News, Summerside. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Um, it's Edward Island. That was my first job for the CBC. Your first job. Did, yeah. you, did you file that report before or after your audition for the Dukes of Hazard? Yeah, Which I know. <laughs> Which that was? That was, you know, that was the day I arrived in Prince Edward Island, actually. I got there. Uh, it was 1985, and I thought I was going to have some period of adjustment. As soon as I landed, they were waiting for me, sent me out with the camera and saying, you're going to do a uh, story for uh, the news tonight. <laughs> and uh, there it was, uh, mustache and all. Looked a bit like Lanny McDonald. You looked a bit like that. I actually like this one too because I mean like I, I've screwed up Strombolopolis before but I love this clip here. Good evening, I'm Scott Russell. Russell. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, still one more time. It's, like, it's too good. It's too good. Watch this again. Good evening, I'm Scott Russell. Russell. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you then? I was probably about uh, 28. At yeah. that time, what but was with uh, the shifty eyes off the top. Uh, well, that was you always had when you went to tape, right? Yeah. You would go, uh, <laughs> let's take a look at those highlights tonight: the Jays and the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> and you used to go like that to the camera, right? And then when you come back out of camera, you go, "What a game that was!" You know, like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the worst nightmare for a broadcaster oh. when you're on teleprompter. You can't read your own name. Yep. Because I've seen it happen where, hi, everybody, my name is fill in the blank, right? right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's the thing about Anchorman, the movie, was that it was closer to the truth than many people want to admit. Yeah. <laughs> like, it really was. Oh, no, there's no question. Um, have you ever read a book that changed the way you lived your life? Um, yes. The Great Gatsby. What did it change? Uh, it made me uh, 
include people. Gatsby was about the classic outsider, mm -hmm. and that, that in the end was his undoing. Right. Um, and I think that we should be inclusive. Sports Day in Canada isn't just something to talk about. There are a lot of events happening, right? Absolutely. Uh, 1,400 events across the country. Uh, we're hoping that more than half a million Canadians will be involved on Sports Day in Canada. RBC is the title sponsor. It's, uh, they've come up with a lot, and we're in association with participation in true sport. And it's just a great celebration of sport as we, we want Canadians to get out and play. It's amazing. So, Sports Day in Canada, Saturday, November the 30th, right here on the Mother Network, CBC. Uh, also, 2014 Winter Olympic Games in Sochi on CBC. He is the legend, Scott Russell. What a pleasure, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.